Hey, welcome back to our program. If you read the papers this week and followed the national news, there's a very concerning opinion by the United States Supreme Court. One of the most disturbing opinions I've seen, I'm a lawyer, and I've never seen a, an opinion that maybe hit home so much to so many people as this opinion did here last week. Case of the Westboro Baptist Church. Westboro, I say it's a Baptist church. It is a fringe church that say they're Baptist, but a number of people would take issue whether they're a legitimate Baptist church. It's a family, half crazy family, quite frankly, who do a great deal of vile protesting, uh, they, what they did was they were protesting a funeral where a young man who was killed in Afghanistan was being buried. They were not on the funeral plot, but right on the edge of the cemetery, right in the public sector, screaming and hollering and waving their banners, saying that uh, this young man represented the very worst of the American government. They were protesting the Jews, the Catholics, they were uh, uh, Muslims, gays, and that the Lord did not look well on all of those groups and that America was going to hell in a handbasket and that was the uh, focus of their uh, protest. And so the question is, does the First Amendment allow freedom of speech to apply to a hate speech when great harm is done to a grieving family? I mean, that's the whole issue right there, isn't it? Uh, Justice Roberts, who uh, writes some off-the-wall decisions, I'm not a big fan of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, he said that uh, the bedrock principle underlying the First Amendment uh, is, is uh, he said, uh, uh, is that government cannot punish words or ideas simply because society finds the idea itself offensive and disagreeable. And he says you can't limit freedom of speech. Well, Justice Roberts is dead wrong. We limit, we don't limit but we put certain constraints on a whole cross-section of speech. You can't go disrupt the Supreme Court with Justice Roberts uh, presiding. You have to stay a good distance away. There are limitations we put on a variety of speech. You can't jump up into a movie theater and scream fire uh, that lets people trample each other to death. You can't do that under our law. That doesn't limit your right to freedom of the speech. If you want to go out and say the place should be burned down uh, outside the crowd, you can do that. But there are limitations we put on. I was Secretary of State of Louisiana for eight years and under the law, and I pushed the law, you cannot hand out pamphlets or electioneer within 600 feet of a polling location. Well, I guess you could say that limits your freedom of speech to get right in the face of a voter going in the polls, but we want the decorum. We want to have a little freedom. You know what it is? It's something I've talked about before in this show. It's the in-your-face concept. I'm going to leave you alone to live your life as you want. But stay out of my face. Don't get into my face and disrupt what I want to do. And you certainly don't disrupt the grieving of this family, grieving their son who was killed defending our country halfway around the world. Now, Justice Alito, and I've had some problems with him too, but uh, he made some pretty good points. Here's what he said. Our profound national commitment to free and open debate is not a license for the vicious verbal assault that occurred in this case. This is uh, Samuel Lito writing this, the only dissenter. The vote was nine or the eight to one. What he says is, in order to have a society in which public issues can be openly and vigorously debated, get this, it is not necessary to allow the brutalization of innocent victims. Now, Justice Alito is right on. And I'd take it a step further. I think you do have a license to brutalize victims. If you're away from those victims, you're not in their face. We're not limiting speech by uh, uh, putting some limitations on this family to protest. We're saying there's a time and a place, and you can't do it right in the face of the victims. I'm surprised there's not more concern expressed about this decision. You know, the New York Times and most of the press say, oh, it's great reflection of freedom of speech. Uh, wait till their son is killed in a car accident or their daughter has been ravishly murdered and they want to bury them in peace and some fringe group comes in and, and gets in their face and says, ah, no, uh, that, you know, their lifestyle was terrible and, and uh, they deserve what they got. And you're trying to grieve your loved one and somebody is doing that to you? That's outrageous. It's dead wrong, it's not right, and Supreme Court, in this case, you blew it. And I hope we've got some brave members of Congress who will pass some constitutional amendment 
to allow the basic right of an individual to grieve in peace, to have their space within some confined constraints. I understand that. I'm a big believer in freedom of speech, and I've written and talked on this show time and time again about some of the outrageous limitations in trials uh, that are take place throughout this country where judges arbitrarily put on gag orders that I think is dead wrong. But in this case, you know, and I don't want to get too emotional about this thing, but you know, the, the young man was defending our freedom to have freedom of speech. He gave his life for his country. And the family can't bury their own child in peace. We're better than that. We can do better than that. That decision is just wrong. I'll be right back.